Physician assistant career is finished. Nurse practitioners are superior and have beaten PAs. What's up you guys, it's Adana. I am back with another video for you guys. So guys, like can we just all get along? Can we, can we all get along? Can we, can we get along? Oh my gosh, like I don't even understand. This should not be a competition between NPs and PAs and MDs and anybody else in the healthcare profession. We're all trying to do the same thing. We want to help people. We want to heal people. So why can't we just work together? I got this really like interesting comment about like the PA profession is down the hill. And I wanted to read this for you guys because you know, it was comparing like PAs and NPs and I just kind of wanted to shed a little bit of light on that, um, the negativity that it's kind of like promoting because at the end of the day, we should be uplifting each other. Like the, it's a healthcare profession. We're in this together. It is like a family. So let's all parts of the family or the body work together for the greater purpose, right? But let me read this comment for you guys. And then you guys can leave your comments in the comment section below and let me know what you think about what this person said. So this comment was, was written to me. It said, physician assistant career is finished. Nurse practitioners are superior and have beaten PAs. NPs are better training, um, I guess should have or have better training is probably what they were trying to say, but you know, whatever. Um, I, don't, I don't think they're an NP. <laughs> but um, NPs are better training, have better earnings, are perf are preferentially hired and have greater confidence by the general public and government. In the DOD, which is the Department of Defense and Department of Veteran Affairs, all NPs were made independent. However, all PAs were told they should be dependent. Um, this decision was made because the federal government doesn't trust PAs and therefore require all PAs to have their work closely supervised at every step because they might hurt someone. However, the NPs can fully practice all day long without a physician oversight. And the DOD and VA, because of their supervised, uh, their superior training and superior level of experience, so they have, there you have it. Um, so I guess they're saying, you know, in the VA, they don't have to be supervised so, because they're superiorly trained there you have it. That's why NPs are better. Um, the government doesn't trust PAs. Why would an undergraduate spend over 100000 to go into a career that is going to be dead in 10 years? Either go to medical school or go to NP school. Do not go to PA school unless you want to find a new career in 10 years. Now, William McNeil. Mr. McNeil, um, I, like, I have to wholeheartedly disagree with you. First off, the PA profession this year is celebrating 50 years of being in existence, okay? So um, I'm pretty sure there were like nurses and um, uh, maybe physicians and, and other people that were saying these exact same words that you were saying, you know, 30, 40 years ago. Why go into a profession that's going to be non-existent within 10 years? Well, it hasn't, it hasn't come non-existent yet. It hasn't become that yet. And furthermore, more and more PAs are being, um, are being like pushed out into the public, are being utilized. Um, there are more and more PA schools being opened up every year because this is a profession that is on the rise. It is growing like wildfire. And I really don't see it stopping in 10 years. I only see it expanding to even more autonomy when it comes to uh, 10 years down the line. So there are some things that I did agree with you on that um, NPs were preferentially hired. And the reason why NPs were preferentially hired was because um, last year or the year before that in many states, they got their autonomy. But prior to that, they still required a physician to sign off on different things. Um, but last year they got their autonomy. 
and they can now practice full scope of autonomy without any type of supervising at all. So yes, they were being preferentially hired because why would you hire on a PA that needs to be supervised um, as opposed to an NP that doesn't need to be supervised? I'm only hiring one person as opposed to now trying to hire two in a sense. So yes, you're right with that, but that's not the case any longer. If you go and do some research um, on OTP, that is optimal team practice, it is a law that has been put into place to give PAs a more autonomous full scope of practice in a sense. Um, yes, we're still collaborating with, P, um, with physicians, but we don't require them to sign off on any of our orders. We actually can carry our own insurance with respect to our clients and patients that we're seeing. We can follow specific patients. We can follow our own patients. Furthermore, everything is de decided at the practice level. So when it comes to being a PA, if I'm collaborating with a physician, like my scope of practice is the, the sky is the limit. And I only see things getting better in the future. I only see us getting full autonomy in the future. Yes, NPs go to school for four years, as most um, PAs do. They have bachelor's degree prior to going to their master's degree. Um, NPs go to master's, uh, go and get their master's degree. So do PAs, and now PAs also do have a doctoral degree, as um, the DNPs do have as well. So. Our learning is pretty much like the same. And I know that there are some PAs that were um, nurses prior to becoming PAs or in other professions that were in healthcare prior to becoming PAs that have amazing knowledge base. So to say that on a, like just a large scale, you're just over here doing this overarching statement that <laughs> NPs are more superior, that's like inaccurate. I mean, I don't think it's a matter of superior or not. I think we're all in this for the same end goal, which is to provide care. And so when it comes down to it, it's about how are you providing care? Be, be you an NP, an MD, or PA. If you're providing poor care, then you suck. Like you're a horrible provider. Um, and I know some, you know, MDs that aren't the best providers. They don't have the best bedside manner. And it goes the same for PAs and NPs as well. So every, every profession, it's all dependent on the people in that profession. So for you to say that, I wholeheartedly disagree with that statement. Furthermore, Talking about the uh, the DOD and the VA, yes, I mean, maybe those particular um, scopes of the federal government don't necessarily allow PAs to practice autonomously, or maybe they just haven't um, voiced that as yet. I don't know. I really, I'm not in the DOD. I'm not in the VA, so I'm not really sure what's going on there, but I do know what's happening outside in the world with respect to the PA profession. And when it comes down to it, the PA profession is on the rise. We are growing, um, our autonomy is growing. Everything that we're able to do is growing. Uh, hashtags PAs can do that, just letting you know. And um, we're, doing, we're doing our thing. So I just suggest, Mr. McNeil, you go ahead and do a little bit more research on um, the PA profession. Um, and even the NP profession as well. And so you can see the similarities that run through both professions and what we're able to do and what we do do, patient, client, um, preferability, and in with respect to how they feel each person performed. Yes, um, I think there is a perception, you're right, there's a perception that, you know, because you're an assistant, that you're um, less than, but you know, that, per that perception is changing um, because of all of the bomb PAs out there that are doing some great advocacy work for the profession. So um, hopefully, you know, Others like you who may believe this, uh, you know, have the same train of thought or same belief will um, come to understand the profession a lot more. And, um, you know, probably some of the PAs that you probably thought were physicians that did a really great job for you when you were in the ER, um, you know, would like to just feel a little bit more appreciated. And hopefully you can go ahead and be like, thank you for taking care of me when I was sick, because it's usually a PA in the ER that is taking care of you when you're seen um, at those 
ungodly hours of the night. So just a little bit of information for you. Hopefully that helped you get a little bit more clarity. Um, and if you have any more questions or comments, you can go ahead and leave that in the comment section below. I'll, I'll be sure to respond and maybe make another video about it. I don't know. But I thank you for that comment. Um, I really do hope that you go ahead and just, you know, do a little bit more research on the profession and that um, your eyes are opened a little bit more to what we as PAs can do and what we actually do do for the public. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have a comment or question, please leave it below. Please tell me what you thought about this comment um, and then what you think about PAs and NPs and MDs as well. I, I wanna know. And uh, we can just have a conversation in the comment section, all right? Thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys later. Bye.